to order. We're going to go ahead and start with the moment of silence. Everyone, just uh, please join me in a moment of silence. Thank you. We do have everybody present. Item five, recommend approving the agenda of the special call board meeting of Tuesday, April 20, 2021 with any corrections or deletions. So moved. Second. We have a first and a second, Ms. Pat. Please vote. Motion passes 7 0 unanimous. Item 6 presentation regarding RFQ 21 130 delinquent ad valorem tax attorney services as required on the specifications of the request for qualifications. Mr. President and board members, at this time I'm going to turn it over to Ms. Uh, Rosie Pena and Mr. S uh, Miguel Salinas so that they can uh, lead us on this item number 6. Go ahead, Ms. Peña. Thank you, Dr. Gutierrez. Good evening, Board President, Mr. Garcia, Superintendent, Dr. Gutierrez, and distinguished board members. Tonight, with the firm's presentations, we will conclude the ranking process for RFQ 21-130, Delinquent Ad Valorem Tax Attorney Services. But before we do, we would want to review the established guidelines that were delineated during the last workshop. The firms will draw for presentation positions. We do have in the audience two representatives from the firms that as soon as we're done with the presentation, we'll make their way over to Mr. Salinas so they can draw for the positions. Um, those um, that are not going to present at this time will be held in the purchasing department. A maximum of five firm representatives, including presenters, will be allowed in the boardroom at all times. Total presentation time will be 30 minutes per firm, 15 minute presentation and 15 minutes for questions and answers. I will be keeping time and Mr. Salinas will serve as moderator during the question and answer section and as a reminder, the same questions must be addressed to both firms. Once the presentation process is complete, administration is requesting a recess from the meeting so as to complete the ranking criteria sheets. Ms. Drew Brown and Ms. Daniela Lopez Valdez will gather all the ranking criteria sheets and perform the tabulation. Once tabulation is complete, administration will make copies of the total awarded points for each participating firm and distribute to each board member. Meeting is reconvened and a motion is needed by board for the selection of the firm to be awarded RFQ 21-130 Delinquent Avalorum Tax Attorney Services. Do we have any questions? Question? Should we have two of these interview questions? 
we gave you a, a one copy. Um, I think cause you're gonna you're gonna take notes on it. Is that what you're saying? Because we can make a, a the the one that says tax that Valorian interview questions. You wanted a, a second copy? But well, it has to yeah. you mark it. So you have to have two. Okay, you have two. Oh no. Now we have. Okay, one. we'll we'll get you the second one. No, it's okay. We can just make copies real quickly. Yes. The first firm to be presented will be the firm of Limebarger. Mr. Uh, President, can we wait to get the paperwork back before we start? Yes. And it's okay because they still need to set up, so it works okay. Ms. Rosie Pena is going to be the timekeeper. If I correct, I'm looking at my notes. So you will keep uh, track of the time. And then everybody has a question. So you have the scoring uh, form. So that uh, would be, I mean, that you will have that side by side with your questions. Let us know when you're ready, so that way we can start. Uh, yes. Yeah, so, uh, Thank you. Um, Mr. Garcia, we're ready? Board oh. members, Dr. Gutierrez, um, I'm going to address my comments to the presenters. Good afternoon. My name is Miguel Salinas. I am the staff attorney for the school district. With me is Rosario, Rosario Peña, the purchasing director for the district. I will be the moderator for tonight's proceedings and Ms. Pena will be the timekeeper. Before we get started, I would like to introduce the interview committee members, starting on my left, board member Jessica Gonzalez, board member Denise Garza, board assistant secretary Daniela Lopez Valdez, board vice president Prissy Roca Tipton, board president Eddie Garcia, board secretary Drew Brown, and board member Minerva Pena. Also on the days is the superintendent of schools, Dr. Rene Gutierrez, the board secretary, Patricia Perez, Perez, and superintendent secretary, Minerva Almanza. Sir, would you introduce yourself and your team present here tonight? I think we need to turn on the microphone. Thank you. Yes, my name is John Guevara. With me tonight is attorney uh, Ariana Curiel. Attorney uh, Roman Dino Esparza and our IT professional uh, Gon Gonzalo Villa Gomez. Thank you, Mr. Guevara. The board has allotted 30 minutes for this proceeding. The first 15 minutes is to allow you to make your presentation. The next 15 minutes is reserved for you to answer seven pre selected questions that will be read by me. Each question will be evaluated and scored from one to four, with one the lowest and four the highest. 
for both segments. Ms. Pena will advise you when there is one minute left, if that's all right, unless you need more time. Yep. That's fine. That, that's fine. Uh, please be advised time limits will be strictly enforced. Also be advised for the question and answer segment of the presentation. If you run out of time before answering each question, you will not be scored for those left un unanswered. So keep the 15 minutes in, in mind. If you need me to repeat a question, please let me know and I will re-ask it. Any questions? You said there were seven questions? Seven questions, sir. Okay. Some will have multiple parts and I'll, I'll give you a warning. Okay. Okay. Ready to start, sir? Yes. Okay. Miss, the time now is 541. Ms. Pena, you ready to start? Um, you may begin your presentation. Mr. President, distinguished members of the board, and members of the staff, and members of the public, uh, good afternoon. My name is John Givada. I am a partner with the Line Barger Firm, and I manage our Brownsville office. Um, we're very appreciative of the opportunity to be presenting our qualifications to you tonight uh, to collect your delinquent taxes. To begin our presentation, I'd like to tell you a little bit about our law firm and what we offer BISD. First, our law practice is strictly in government receivables. That's the only type of law that we practice, government receivables. That's delinquent tax collections, delinquent court fees and fines, parking violations, toll road receivables, as well as state franchise taxes and income taxes. Our firm is the largest, most successful collections law firm in the country. We offer BISD our experience. Our firm has over 45 years of government collection experience. We have over 1,000 employees, 123 attorneys in 48 offices across the country. Our nationwide experience is beneficial to our local clients and BISD. We implement different collection strategies throughout the country and we, we get our best practices and implement those locally. And so that benefits BISD. It helps maximize BISD collections. We offer a strong local presence. The Valley is strong because we have two full service offices in Brownsville and in Edinburgh and six substations throughout the Valley. We're the only firm trusted by over 100 Rio Grande Valley clients, both large and small, including each of the five county governments, as well as the two multi-county school districts. We offer local attorney experience. Our Brownsville office has three full-time attorneys. We're backed up by the law firm of Esparza and Garza. We've enjoyed nearly a 13-year relationship with them and they provide assistance to us on state and federal litigation. We're backed up by five additional attorneys that are work out of our Edinburgh office, and they, they operate totally out of the Edinburgh office. Our attorneys are here, their attorney, attorneys are there to, to uh, work on our clients' accounts. This attorney group has over 200 years of collective legal experience. We offer a trained local staff We've been in Brownsville since 1985, over 35 years. A full service office that has 25 full-time, highly trained bilingual employees, including taxpayer assistance clerks, payment agreement and bankruptcy clerks, property inspectors, uh, tax warrant and tax sale managers, litigation support, as well as our attorneys. We offer BISD consistent, dependable collections. What you see here are the last five years of your fiscal year collections. You're on a fiscal year of July to June. Uh, and these are the collections that have been verified by the county tax office. Your finance department receives these reports on a daily, weekly, and yearly, or monthly and yearly basis. And so what you see here, the first thing that you see is consistent 40 to 41% collections each of the last five years. I'd like to point out that even last year, a COVID year that affected the entire community, you were still very close to the 40% range. The other firm, you had another firm that collecting for BISD just a short time ago in 2009 through maybe the middle part of 2012. Uh, and this, these are their collections. Uh, again, the same fiscal year, uh, July to June, they had a 37.28 their first year, but then dropped to 35%. Uh, on our worst year, uh, 
of the last five, uh, which was the COVID year, we're still close to 40%, so almost a five percentage point difference. Uh, we offer the district dependability. Locally, 30 of the 33 school districts in the Rio Grande Valley have entrusted our firm to collect their delinquent taxes. And it's the same across the state. Corpus Christi, San Antonio, San Antonio Northside, Southside, El Paso, Dallas, Houston, Fort Worth, and a lot of districts across the state trust our firm to collect their delinquent taxes. We offer consistent, dependable, a consistent, dependable product that we're very proud of and that we don't believe you can get from the other firm. Let me show you why. This chart shows BISD collections the last five years, just a reminder. And then we've compared the collections for Wessico ISD, which is a competitor uh, client. Uh, now, you can see the same time period here. Wessico ISD is on a different fiscal year. They run from September to August. But these numbers, what we did is we converted their numbers so that you're looking at the same time period, July to June. We converted the numbers, verify these numbers with the Hidalgo County Tax Office, so you're looking at apples to apples, the same time period for each firm. As you can see, Wessico's collections are last year with 25.64, uh, a COVID year, but you see the last three years their collection rate has, has dropped. Uh, still no comparison to BISD's collection numbers. I will tell you this, the collection numbers for BISD, if they're not in the best, in the, if they're, they're very close to the best in the valley, if not the best, 40% is excellent. Uh, and so you've, you're the shining star here and you have been for several years. Another client that the competitor has is uh, La Jolla ISD, very similar results. Again, they're on a September to August uh, uh, fiscal year. We converted the numbers, had them verified by the Hidalgo County Tax Office, and you've got a very similar outcome. Uh, still significantly lower than BISD's collection rates. Uh, and their last year, with a COVID year, 30.8, uh, are still just a little bit below four, uh, 40, but consistent, very consistent. We offer you value added services. Now, I'd like to tell you a little bit about our collection success. It's a result of deliberate action and planning. It's not by chance. What we do is we look for an outcome and we plan to achieve that outcome, very much like your teachers do each and every week with lesson plans. You've gotta have an outcome and how are you gonna get there? We do the very same thing with each and every account. Effective communication is one of those components. Everything that we do, mailings, telephone calls, personal visits, they're all aimed at one thing, and that's talking to the taxpayer, getting their attention to come in and talk to us or talk to us on the phone. And many of your taxpayers, majority of the taxpayers want to take care of the taxes that, that are owed. They don't know that they're eligible for uh, 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 exemptions. They don't know that they can make a payment agreement. So a lot of times it's just getting that knowledge out to them. That's our biggest effort. Uh, effective communication. Working with the taxpayers, working with your taxpayers is paramount to us. We go the extra mile with personal visits, business visits. We provide nationwide bankruptcy representation. Pay less, JCPenney, Aristotle, those are just a few examples. These companies were incorporated in other states, so many times when they, when they declare bankruptcy, it's in the state of incorporation. Wherever that is, we have the resources to represent you wherever that filing has occurred. We offer you value added appeals or property value appeals. Our service to the district includes appeals and, and audits. So our, our firm was contracted by BISD to conduct the 2015, 2015 and subsequent audits. And the results uh, include over $2 million in increased state aid for the 2015 and 2016 audits as well as a 2019 self uh, uh, audit, self report audit. In addition, there's uh, $1.4 million in estimated increase, state aid increase uh, for the 2017 and 2019 audits, 
Those will be official later this year. We expect them to be somewhere late summer or early fall for the state to, to approve that. And then the 2020 property value study is currently under review. We also have a product called the Homestead Exemption Audit. Now, this service is really for appraisal districts, but it impacts BISD and other clients that we have. This product is a, is a new product that we came up with uh, about four years ago. Cameron County was one of the first counties to contract with the appraisal district. This was three years ago. We concluded our work about three months ago. And what we did is we went into the appraisal district, looked at all the homestead accounts and verified them for accuracy, duplicates, maybe change in circumstances. Several years ago when they applied for the homestead, they were alive or they, they, uh, the, the taxpayer was alive and they're deceased now, or they qualified back then but bought a, another home and they're living somewhere else. So it was a matter of going in, doing the research. Many taxpayers just didn't know they couldn't have a homestead in Texas and also in Minnesota, uh, or in Texas and Cameron County or Harris County. You can only have one homestead. So we went in there and verified uh, and, and came up with the evidence for the appraisal district to consider. They did so. The result is over $3 million to taxing entities in Cameron County. That's additional revenue that they're getting. But BISD benefited from that. Out of that $3 million, they benefited by over $1 million. Now, this only takes care of the corrections over the last five years. That doesn't count the increased revenue, the increased aid that you're gonna get for future years as a result of those accounts being corrected. So there's more money uh, in the pipeline. So that is a beneficial product to BISD. We offer other value added services like education and training. We offer the truth and taxation seminars. These help our, our clients, finance staffs with computing and setting tax rates and procedures. BISD was a participant last year and the year before. We provide legislative updates through roadshows offered to our clients and their finance staff as well, covering legislative changes that might have an impact on their operations and programs. We also have, con we also conduct property tax classes for the appraisal district and tax office staff. We have community outreach programs like our new online auction service. Uh, this service was actually started before COVID became a reality and we had to live with it, but we were kind of ahead of our time. The online auction now lets individuals uh, uh, bid on properties from the comfort of their home, so social distancing is, just kind of worked out. Um, it expands the potential uh, number of bidders and interested parties, and it's very, very transparent. In light of COVID, it's an excellent effort to social distance. As you can see, our services are not just about collecting taxes. Our firm is different because our approach is different. It's about how we reach out to the taxpayer and how we have outreach to the community. Take, for instance, our firm's COVID response. We saw what, what this COVID response was going to be and how it was going to affect our clients. We immediately suspended litigation. We hadn't started our online auction yet. We, we suspended the tax sales that were going on in person. We suspended mailings, property visits. What we did was we initiated a program that we call Compassionate Collections. And we did this through telephone work. We called your taxpayers and talked to them and said, hey, if you've been affected by COVID, let us know. We will code the account, okay? It, it, it wasn't relieving them of the taxes, but it was relieving them of anything that we had in the pipeline as far as litigation. And we provided them with more information. The response was amazing. You saw your collection rates during a COVID year, and we're having a better year this year than we had last year. So that really worked. Um, we told them that we understood their situation, and again, incredible response. We also established safety protocols to protect taxpayers and our staff. We visited with your taxpayers in our parking lot and uh, negotiated payment agreements with them in the safety of their own vehicles. We offer community involvement. We're invested in this community. We not only work, and, and in Brownsville, but we eat, shop, play, and contribute our time and resources. We volunteer and contribute to charity programs that make a difference. We're baseball coaches, we're scout leaders, we're parent volunteers. We support and give back to nonprofit organizations and charities throughout Brownsville. We offer you professional results. Your area colleagues 
have given our staff and our work product high marks. Several area districts and officials have provided letters of One minute. recommendations which we've included in our packets, in our RFQ responses. They testify to our professionalism, honesty, and job performance. The other firm makes promises to open up an office in Brownsville. They've identified a, an office that conducts other types of legal work besides uh, delinquent taxes. Um, they don't have the space or parking to adequately serve your clients. In closing, we offer BISD our ability to do the job and, and, our, and dependable, offer dependable, consistent results. We offer our trust, our professionalism that our, your colleagues have testified to. We offer our commitment to the community. And finally, we offer our capability, resources, and experience that provides the district with proven, not promised results. Thank you for the opportunity to present our qualifications. We appreciate your consideration of our firm to continue its work with, with the district. So are you ready to proceed with the second part? Yes. Okay. Ms. Pena, whenever you're ready. Okay. First question is three parts, Mr. Guevara. Will your firm guarantee to our school district and this board that all future property value studies will be current? How will this guarantee be implemented? And how will you ensure that every penny that is available to our district is collected? Yes. Uh, if that's what you want, if you want us to do the property value study, we will perform that property value study. As attorneys, we have to have a contract to, to fully represent you because that's the first thing that we have to have the authority. And so a contract requires that. Fortunately, we have contracts with you to do just that. Uh, we have a dedicated staff to accomplish that. Uh, the person who heads up our property value appeals group used to be the head appraiser at the Texas Comptroller of Comptroller's Office. He, he, he's been with us for about seven years now, but he, he managed that department. He saw what was coming in and he, he managed the entire department. So we have very good experience doing that. Number two is two parts. What is your success rate with tax cases how much money have you saved your clients? I'm sorry, can you repeat that, please? Yes. What is your success rate with tax cases, and how much money have you saved your clients? Okay. Uh, well, it, success on a tax case is difficult to measure. Uh, if we file a lawsuit, we normally will get a judgment, but it all is all dependent on the judge. The judge. The judge gives the taxpayer uh, uh, the opportunity to negotiate a payment agreement, and that's good for us. We, we enjoy that because that helps us accomplish a payment agreement and not a judgment. The last thing we want to do is put a property up for sale. Uh, we've never lost a case, so uh, I, I can't remember losing a case, so it's 100% on that. Uh, as far as measuring the success of what our efforts accomplish, uh, is looking at your delinquent tax roll. So the five bars that I showed you, uh, I showed you that you know 40% was on, on average collected. If you can imagine each one of those bars being a bucket of water, at the top of that bucket, it's full of water, that's 100%. That's everything that you're owed for that year. We've collected 40% of that bucket each and every year. The problem is every year that bucket gets more water in it from individuals who cannot pay the current tax, the tax based on the tax rate that you have approved. So you always have some individuals who, who will go delinquent and that'll get added to next year's budget. So if, n if no more water was getting into that bucket, we would finish that work in about two and a half years because you're averaging about 40% of collections each year. So th the issue is the new taxes that get rolled into that. I have no control over that. I just know that I have a job to do to collect as much of that bucket as possible whenever it's given to me. It's a moving target. I have no control over that. But I guarantee you the 40% collection rate, you don't see that all the time. Number three, do you let people know that they can, with the county, city, and BISD no later than June 30th, thus avoiding the interest your office charges when making a tax agreement? Yes. By law, the county tax office or all tax offices are required to send the May resolution. That's a notice that is sent to every delinquent taxpayer that goes delinquent, that is delinquent as of May 1st, 
and you cannot send it 30 days prior to the July 1st deadline and you can't send it more than 60 days in advance so we call it the May resolution your tax office has to send that out by law we pay for that we since I've been here I've been here 18 years 17 years our firm has always paid for that so we are notifying the taxpayer before that account gets delivered to us that they can enter into a payment agreement or they owe the taxes they've got to get them paid before the penalty kicks in on July 1st number four will you be willing to negotiate the percentage charge to the taxpayer I can't do that no I, I can't it's 15% the law the law allows you to to approve a resolution up to 20% uh, of the of what is owed on the tax bill uh, BISD has 15% we have many of our clients that are at 20 uh, unfortunately I can't negotiate that our firm has a you know has a sticks firm with that 15 many of our clients have 20 and the reason they have 20 is they want to take advantage they want to make sure that the tax rate that they set that money is collected and so if they have a penalty uh, they they see that as a discouragement from going delinquent for instance if you get a bill from JC Penney uh, and you get a bill from Dillard's one charges you 12 percent the other charges you 18 percent which one are you going to pay first you're going to pay the one with the with a larger penalty uh, that's kind of the same s strategy that some of our clients might might want to take your collections have been great at 15 percent uh, so uh, yeah that's 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 my answer I, I'm, I'm sorry I can't do that uh, but but you know it costs money to operate and and 15 you know many attorneys charge a whole lot more in contingency fees 15 percent is not our profit 15 percent is what we get and that we need to pay out you know all the the services the building the rent the the mailings the litigation we, we, we front all that money number five is two parts how many full-time staff members do you have in Brownsville and is that 40 hours a week we have 25 full-time staff members in Brownsville and that is 40 hours a week yes sometimes a little bit more number six what unique qualities does your firm have that separates you from your competitors besides being local that enhance your ability to collect delinquent taxes for BISD I think it's the, the, the value added services and I only touched on a few of them the nationwide bankruptcy representation uh, we have five call centers across the country those call centers receive and make outbound calls I guess it's, it's resources it's the resources that our firm has it's also the experience that we have by having clients all over the country I mentioned that earlier you know we can see what works in different areas and we look at the same areas, same demographics that might work here in, locally and we implement implement those strategies the key is being able to change strategies if they don't work if you're still getting you know not so good at collections you have to plan on that you have to change your strategy my wife they use the reason I use the the uh, the teacher uh, you know uh, lesson plan scenario is that my wife is a teacher she's a 33 year veteran so that I've heard all that uh, and that's just kind of the way I'm wired as well I, I like to plan the result and that that's my management style number seven has any school district that you have provided ad valorem tax collection services for missed out or lost funds as a result of your services N not that I'm aware of no all, all the clients that that are under me are very pleased with our services This concludes your presentation. The time now is 6.05. Thank you very much for interviewing with us today. Yes, thank you. Thank you for your, your listening to me. I hope I didn't ramble. Thank you so much. Thank you. And now we'll set up for the next presentation. Oh, you know what? I'm sorry. I, I have handouts. If, would, would you like handouts of our presentation?
The next presenter is a firm of Purdue, Brandon. Let us know when you're ready so that way we can uh, start the process. We're all ready? Okay, uh, Miguel Salinas, go ahead, we're ready. Thank you, Dr. Gutierrez. I'm gonna address the presenter. Uh, good afternoon, my name is Miguel Salinas. I am the staff attorney for the school district. With me is Rosario Peña, the purchasing director for the district. I will be the moderator for tonight's proceedings and Ms. Peña will be the timekeeper. Before we get started, sir, I would like to introduce the interview committee members, starting on my left, board member Jessica Gonzalez, Board Member Denise Garza, Board Assistant Secretary Daniela Lopez Valdez, Board Vice President Prissy Roca Tipton, Board President Eddie Garcia, Board Secretary Drew Brown, and Board Member Minerva Peña. Also on the days is the Superintendent of Schools, Dr. Rene Gutierrez, and the Board Secretary Patricia Perez, and the Superintendent's Secretary Minerva Almanza. Sir, will you introduce yourself and the team present here tonight? Uh, first of all, good evening, Dr. Gutierrez, Mr. President Gutierrez, Garcia. If I may, may I give you the, the rest of the, uh, before we oh, before I'm sorry. You proceed, let me give you the, the kind of the ground rules. Yes. The board has allotted 10, 30 minutes for this proceeding. The first 15 minutes is to allow you to make your presentation. The next 15 minutes is reserved for you to answer seven pre-selected questions that will be read by me. Each question will be evaluated and scored from one to four, with one the lowest and four the highest. For both segments, Ms. Pena will advise you when there is one minute left. Please be advised time limits will be strictly enforced. Also be advised for the question and answer segment of the presentation. If you run out of time before answering each question, you will not be scored for those left unanswered. If you need me to repeat a question, let me know and I will re-ask it. Do you have any questions, sir? No, sir, thank you. All right. Uh, yes, one question. Uh, the first 15 minutes is going to be a question and answer? No, sir. Oh. The first one is your presentation. presentation. Okay. And then the second will be qu the question and answer portion. Ms. Pena, if you're ready. Sir, you may proceed. It is now 6.10. Miguel, Miguel, he was going to introduce his team no. like the others. Okay. Can you allow him to do that first? Yes, absolutely. Yes. Mr. Gutierrez, will you introduce your team? Yes. Here present with me is uh, Rick Pena, who will be heading the, the Brownsville office. My partner... Thelma Bandu, manager, oh, I'm sorry, my office manager, Mari Cortez, and our assistant, Ruben Trigo. Sir, it is now 6.11. Ms. Pena will start the clock. You may begin your presentation. First of all, um, uh, good evening, Dr. Gutierrez, President Garcia, and distinguished members of the board. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank you for the opportunity to be here with you. It is truly an honor and a pleasure. So, why hire Purdue Brandon? Well, when experience, reputation, and performance matter, Purdue Brandon is the right choice. The Bur Purdue team consists of 14 offices throughout the state of Texas, 55 licensed attorneys, and approximately 400 support staff. To the right is the attorney team that will be heading the Brownsville office. It includes myself, project manager, Enrique Peña, who will be handling the Brownsville office, office as I said earlier, Velma Bandu in charge of operations, John Banks who handles bankruptcy and complex, complex litigation, my partner, 
Mike Darlow, who's in charge of our executive committee, Carl Sandin, who handles complex title and research issues, and Donnie Roseman, my partner in charge of administration. Experience matters, and Purdue Brandon has the experience that Brownsville the needs. Purdue Brandon has 50 years, 51 years of experience in governmental collections. We have 1,630 current government tax collection clients, including 750 special districts, 351 school districts, 312 cities, 100 and counties, 59 hospital districts, and 58 appraisal districts. Purdue Brandon is a full service firm. We provide personalized collection programs with an emphasis on a one in one approach that is working closely with the taxpayer to help them resolve their delinquency. We offer complete litigation services, including nationwide bankruptcy representation, complete tax sales services, and other value added services, such as providing legal opinions and information, help with truth and taxation tax, uh, questions, and community involvement and education. Purdue Brandon takes great pride in its community involvement. This is an example of some of the organizations that Purdue Brandon has donated thousands of dollars here in the Rio Grande Valley. It includes boys and girls clubs, food banks, 4-H clubs, education foundations, scholarship foundations, to name just a few. Purdue Brandon has a performance history of high collection rates. When Bur Purdue Brandon has a collection contract, collection rates increase. When Purdue Brandon does not have the collection contract, collections decrease. This is a perfect example. La Jolla ISD, back in 2015-2016, our competitor collected for La Jolla ISD. That year, the collections ended at 26.40%. The following year, they switched over to Purdue, and collections went up by 2.59% to 28.99%, followed by 29.73%, and then 30.24%. At Inverse CISD, similar situation, but the inverse. In this case, Purdue branded collected for Edinburgh CISD back in 2017, 2018. That year, we ended collections at 30.80%. The following year, they switched over to our competitor and collections dropped to 27.57. And in the first quarter of 2019, 2020, collections stood at 7.2% compared to 9.70 of the previous year. I would emphasize that this occurred prior to COVID-19, so COVID-19 had nothing to do with this drop. McAllen ISD, similar situation. Back in 2014-2015, Purdue collected for McAllen ISD. That year, we ended up with collections of 41.32%. Following year, they switched over to the competitor, and collections dropped to 32.52%, followed by 34.30, 34.47, and then 34.90%. They haven't been able to break 35% since switching. City of Far, again, same situation. 2011-2012, Purdue collected for City of Far. That year, collections were at a 36.54%. The following year, they switched over to the competitor and collections dropped all the way to 28.35. And as you can see, collections have not recovered ever since. In the uh, Brownsville ISD RFQ, we were requested to provide collection stats for four entities, school districts that were similar in size to Brownsville ISD. These four entities are Purdue clients, including Spring Branch, Klein, Garland, and Clear Creek ISD. As you can see, collections are regularly over 40% and sometimes even 50%. If you average it out, the collection rate is over 44% for school districts similar in size to Brownsville ISD. Purdue Brandon has long enjoyed a positive public perception with its superior collections and customized collection programs. Purdue Brandon is committed to premier customer service with exceptional staff upholding the core values of honesty, integrity, and ethical conduct. The same cannot be said for our competitor. In fact, I wanna go a little back in history. Back in May of 2019, I was able to meet with the interim superintendent at the time. And the reason I wanted to meet with the superintendent was that our firm had conducted a study of school districts throughout the valley. And uh, what we wanted to see is 
is whether those school districts were losing out on state aid. The way we did this is we went to TEA to look to see what school districts had filed audits or appeals with the state and uh, which ones hadn't. And then if they hadn't, the next step was to determine if the school district was losing out on state aid because of this failure to file audits. Well, Brownsville ISD was one of those such school districts. So we explained this to the, to the uh, superintendent. She was very interested. She asked us to send a letter of proposal. And one other thing, I also explained that the deadline to file an audit for the 2015 tax year, which the deadline was in, in, in 2019, June of 2019, was fast approaching. So time was of the essence. So we, pr we sent our letter. We thought we were gonna be hired. And unfortunately, we were not hired. And we later found out that the district decided to use their current delinquent tax firm to handle the audits. Of course, I was disappointed because I felt we had brought this to the attention and we were hoping to get hired. But again, that didn't happen, so we moved on. Then, however, on November 6th of 2019, the delinquent tax firm came and did a report on delinquent tax collections. And at that meeting, uh, the uh, firm, the attorney for the firm, was asked by Mr. Cowan about these audits. What was the status of these audits? And the attorney said, yes, we're on top of it. We already filed for 2015, and, uh, which was fine. But then the, several other comments were made that were very misleading. Some of those comments, these are quotes taken directly from the, uh, the uh, meeting. Every year we work with the appraisal district. Every year we do this. This is not a new product. It was always part of our package. To the top right, that's our standard service. And there's one other statement that was made that I didn't quote here, but it was somewhere along the lines, well, that might be something new to the other firm, but it's nothing new to us. Well, I knew first of all that audits had not been filed for several years and the school district had actually lost a state aid because of this. And, um, I was personally offended because uh, the statement was contrary to what I had said, so it, was, it, it challenged our, the integrity and, uh, and the, uh, the work that we do. Um, I wasn't sure what to do at the time, but luckily the uh, school district decided to go out for proposals for uh, delinquent tax collections, RFQ. And I felt that I had to protect the reputation of our firm and, and clear the matter. So as part of my presentation, what we did is we actually went pro forma and did audits for the most recent four years for which an audit was not uh, 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 filed for the school district. And the most recent four years in 2019 were 2014, 2013, 2012, and 2011. So we did the work, we, did, we, we, uh, we ran the numbers, and we determined for every single one of those years, the school district lost out on student, uh, state aid. 2011, over 270,000. 2012, over 800. 2013, over 700,000. And 2014, over 600,000. Altogether, we estimated that the school district lost out on over $2.4 million, contrary to what my competitor had said. Now, at that meeting, the board was not to decide on a firm yet. That was set for another meeting. That was May 5th of 2020. At that meeting, the board was simply gonna go ahead and vote on a delinquent tax firm. Uh, there was no more uh, presentations or anything. However, my competitor uh, got on this podium and addressed the board and admitted, yes, we did not file audits for those years. But the reason we didn't file those audits was because it would have not benefited the school district. And then he doubled down, he said, in fact, had you basically followed Purdue's advice, you would have lost over $2 million. That was not true. However, there was no way for me to prove that right then and there. Luckily, or fortunately, one of the board members asked that the item be tabled and asked for an investigation by the administration to determine who was telling the truth. On June 16 of 2020, the administration revealed the results of their investigation and confirmed what Purdue Brandon had told the school district. Indeed, the school district had lost over $2 million in state aid. They had not filed audits for those years. Mm -hmm. 
After Purdue Brandon alerted the school district of this situation, the school district did in fact file two audits for the 2015-2016 tax years. Those numbers were certified by the comptroller and TEA has released to the school district over $1.5 million just for those two years. Years that probably would have been lost had it not been for us alerting the school district. In fact, our property, property value studies pro, uh, team is one of the most experienced, if not the most experienced team in the state. They have 25 years of experience, four leading experts, and they represent 430 school districts in this work. To this date, we have never received an apology from my competitor for spreading false information, for defaming our firm. And as far as I know, the school district has not, be, has not been apologized for, for wasting its time and resources investigating this matter when everybody knew what the truth was. Brownsville ISD needs a tax collection attorney that will work in the best interest of the school district. Be open, honest, and transparent, and do what's right to maximize opportunities in increasing funds through delinquent tax and audited appeals. Purdue Brandon has a proven track record that includes more than 50 years of experience, quality perform performance and high collection rates, and serving our clients with honesty and integrity, resulting in more revenue for our clients. I want to thank you for your time and uh, would open it up for any questions that you may have. May I proceed, Mr. Garcia, Dr. Gutierrez? Go ahead, Mr. Salinas. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Gutierrez, I'm going to ask you seven questions. You'll have 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. The first one is three parts. Will your firm guarantee to our school district and this board that all future property value studies will be current? How will this guarantee be implemented? How will you ensure that every penny that is available to our district is collected? Again, we were the one that first alerted the school district to this situation. We were ne not even representing the school district. So, and again, I want to emphasize we have one of the most experienced, if not the most experienced team in the state. Uh, we have 430 clients. We have never failed one of our clients and we will not fail Brownsville ISD. Number two, it is two parts. What is your success rate with tax cases? How much money have you saved your clients? I'm sorry, with tax cases? Let me read it again. What is your success rate with tax cases? How much money have you saved your cl clients? Well, I mean, uh, you know, we, we don't lose tax cases. I mean, uh, the law is pretty clear on this. Uh, you know, the most the the more vulnerable uh, accounts are the uh, personal property accounts that is business personal property property that disappears we have a very active warrant uh, tax warrant system uh, to make sure that that property does not leave the cut the county or does not disappear uh, it's a in, in case uh, you don't know uh, we have tax suits and we have tax warrants tax warrants is a lot quick quicker and it's something that we can use on personal property uh, we send a sheriff or a constable. They can seize property in place if they know that it's going to be lost and taxes have not been paid for. Uh, we have a very high success rate with that. And how do we save money uh, for, for our clients or taxpayers for that matter? Well, one of the things that happened since, since Purdue came into the Valley, um, before Purdue was in the Valley, fees were already at the highest, uh, highest uh, amount of uh, allowable the law. That's 20% of the collection fee. Since Purdue came on board, we reduced fees for all our clients to 15%, and so has our competitors. They filed suit as well, at, filed uh, done the same as well for their clients, with a few exceptions like Harlingen and Harlingen ISD. Uh, also, when we file suits, one of the things that we do to save money, our title is less expensive than our competitor. Our competitor charges $250 per, per title, we charge $175. Uh, we do, oh, one of the other things is uh, when we publicize our taxes our tax sales uh, we always look for the less expensive form of publication that's a way to save the taxpayer money um, so we're always looking for ways to save money for the taxpayer because uh, uh, essentially it's the taxpayer that pays for those for those fees thank you number three do you let people know that they can make a tax agreement with the county city and BISD no later than June 30th thus avoiding the interest your office charges when making a tax agreement? 
Yes, absolutely. We always do let them know that. Uh, we always let the taxpayer know what is what can help them the most. For example, uh, if a taxpayer is, is delinquent but they're entitled to a deferral, well, when you are entitled to a deferral, even though you go go delinquent, you still have to pay the taxes, but it reduces the penalties and interest substantially and collection fees. So we let taxpayers know about this. So uh, when they're paying, tell them, look, pay the new year, save the collection fees. Uh, if they're, in, if they're in, entitled to a, 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 payment, a payment plan at the tax office, we let them know. In fact, we encourage them, try the tax office first. See if you can enter into a payment agreement there. And then the tax office, of course, uh, uh, does not uh, add the collection fee for the new year. Thank you. Number four, will you be willing to negotiate the percentage charge to the taxpayer? Uh, yes, we would. Number five is two parts. How many full-time staff members do you have in Brownsville, and is that 40 hours a week? Uh, at this point, we don't actually have the office. The office is, is uh, uh, Ricardo Peña. We expect to fully staff the office with, uh, we estimate seven, seven employees there, uh, hopefully all of them full-time. They're here in the Brownsville office. Number six, what unique qualities does your firm have that separates you from your competitor, competitors besides being local that enhance your ability to collect delinquent taxes for BISD? Well, I want to emphasize our experience, our reputation, and our performance. It precedes us. Uh, no other firm of our size has been in this business for 51 years like us. Uh, our focus is on doing the best job for our clients. We don't focus on getting as many clients as we can. We focus on doing the best job that we can for the clients that we have. Uh, as, as I stated earlier, uh, we go above and beyond, even for, no, for, for entities that are not our clients. We research the whole valley. We surveyed the whole valley to see what school districts were losing out on money. And once we found out which school districts were, were not maximizing their state aid, we went to them, approached them, and let them know about that. We were able to pick, pick up um, a contract with PSJ, Don ISD, Ed Couchels ISD, now West Laco ISD, and now they're, they're able to maximize their collection. So we do everything. We go above and beyond, not just the work that we do, but what other benefits can we, can we uh, uh, give to our clients. Number seven. Has any school district that you have provided ad valorem tax collection services for missed out or lost funds as a result of your services? No, uh, they have not. The only, uh, uh, like, like I said before, personal property accounts, it's, you're not always able to collect on business personal property accounts. If anybody's told you differently, that's, that's incorrect. In fact, when we first started collecting in Hidalgo County, uh, we represented Hidalgo County and that was our only client. And uh, that was around 2008 during the Great Recession. There was a lot of companies that were going bankrupt. They were being foreclosed by banks. There are several, in, and I'll be specific, in McAllen ISD, for example, there was a very large account. The bank was foreclosing on the company and they were going to sell everything. They were gonna auction everything. We saw that, saw that and acted quickly. We filed a tax warrant, we got the sheriff to seize the property, and we were able to get our clients paid in full. Our competitors, were, their clients, were not paid at all. McAllen ISD, City of McAllen, South Texas College, they did not react, and they lost hundreds of thousands of dollars. So the school district alone lost over $100,000 in that one. So if anybody says, we've never failed in collecting a delinquent tax, that's absolutely not true. I, you know, we have, and I know our competitor has, when we've been successful in collecting much more than the, that they did, or nothing at all that they did. Thank you, Mr. Gutierrez. Uh, this concludes our presentation. The time now is 6.31. Thank you very much.
Thank you. Ms. Rosie Peña, this time everybody's tallying their uh, scoreable sheets and then forward them to um, Ms. Lopez and Ms. Brown who will collect them and then tally the, yes, the scoring sheets, yes. Yes, sir. So go ahead and complete the scoring sheets and then forward them to Ms. Lopez and Ms. Brown so that they can add them up, yes. Those are the questions. We, we want the tally sheets, the one that were the scoring. Yes, uh, Miguel, you were the one that was assigned to check on the references. Any? Um, Those are in the package, not everyone, uh, not all the, the people they listed as references uh, submitted, but uh, we provided those that did. Those are in the package. Which one is that one, Miguel? This one? It is the uh, blue package, sir. Yes. This one right here? Yes. The references? Yes, sir.
Ms. Spott? Under public comments, sir, there are no speakers that have signed up. Item 8, recommend awarding RFQ 21-130 Delinquent Ad Valorem Tax Attorney Services and to authorize the negotiation of a contract. Contract will be valid for one year upon board approval of said contract with the option to renew. Ms. Uh, Madam Secretary, Ms. Uh, Daniela Lopez. Based on ranking and tallying from all board members, I move to award Linebarger Attorneys at Law the RFQ number 21-130 Deliquent Ad Valorem Tax Attorney Service, who is ranked number one. I second. We have a first and a second, Ms. Pat. Please vote. Please vote. Motion passes for yes, two no, and one abstention. Any other business? Having none? Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. We have Move to adjourn. Okay, we have a, f a first by Ms. Uh, Gonzalez, second by Ms. Peña, Ms. Pat. Please vote. Motion passes 7-0 unanimous, 7-0 3 p.m. <laughs>